I was returning to it. I was returning to work, and therefore I wanted to catch up on the weekend's news. One Forbes article I read near the end of the flight caught my eye. It was about a man named Jude Shao, a Chinese-American who, like me, had an MBA from Stanford. He had been a few years behind me at business school. I didn't know him, but like me, he was a successful businessman in a foreign land in his case, China. He'd gotten into a conflict with some corrupt Chinese officials. In April 1998, Xiao was arrested after refusing to pay a $60,000 bribe to a tax collector in Shanghai. Xiao was eventually convicted on trumped-up charges and sentenced to 16 years in prison. Some Stanford alumni had organized a lobbying campaign to get him out, but it didn't work. As I read, Xiao was rotting away in some nasty Chinese prison. The article gave me the chills. China was ten times safer than Russia when it came to doing business. For a few minutes, as the plane descended through ten thousand feet over Moscow's Sheremetyevo airport, I wondered if perhaps I was being stupid. For years, my main approach to investing had been shareholder activism— In Russia, that meant challenging the corruption of the oligarchs, the twenty-some-odd men who were reported to have stolen thirty-nine percent of the country after the fall of communism and became billionaires almost overnight. The oligarchs owned the majority of the companies trading on the Russian stock market, and they were often robbing those companies blind. For the most part, I had been successful in my battles with them, and while this strategy made my fund successful— It also made me a lot of enemies. As I finished the story about Xiao, I thought, maybe I should cool it. I have a lot to live for. Along with David, I also had a new wife in London. Elena was Russian, beautiful, incredibly smart, and very pregnant with our first child. Maybe I should give it a rest. But then the wheels touched down, and I put the magazines away, powered up my Blackberry, and closed my briefcase. I started checking emails. My focus turned from Jude Shao and the oligarchs to what I had missed while in the air. I had to get through customs, to my car, and back to my apartment. Sheremetyevo Airport is a strange place. The terminal that I was most familiar with, Sheremetyevo II, was built for the 1980 Summer Olympics. It must have looked impressive when it opened, but by 2005, it was far worse for the wear. It smelled of sweat and cheap tobacco. The ceiling was decorated with row upon row of metal cylinders that looked like rusty cans of Folger's coffee. There was no formal line at passport control, so you had to take your place in a mass of people and stay on guard so that no one jumped ahead of you. And God forbid you checked a bag. Even after your passport was stamped, You'd have to wait another hour to claim your luggage. After a four-hour-plus flight, it was not a fun way to gain entry into Russia, particularly if you were doing the trip every ten days, as I was. I had done it this way since 1996, but around 2000, a friend of mine told me about the so-called VIP service. For a small fee, it saved about an hour, sometimes two. It was by no means luxurious— but it was worth every penny. I went directly from the plane to the VIP lounge. The walls and ceiling were painted pea soup green. The floor was tan linoleum. The lounge chairs, upholstered with reddish-brown leather, were just comfortable enough. The attendants there served weak coffee or over-brewed tea while you waited. I opted for the tea with a slice of lemon and gave the immigration officer my passport. Within seconds, I was engrossed in my Blackberry's email dump. I barely noticed when my driver, Alexei, who was authorized to enter the suite, came in and started chatting with the immigration officer. Alexei was forty-one, like me, but unlike me was six feet five inches, two hundred forty pounds, blonde and hard-featured. He was a former colonel with the Moscow Traffic Police and didn't speak a word of English, He was always on time, and always able to talk his way out of minor jams with traffic cops. I ignored their conversation.